and bitches and moans and complains and whines and I fusses about anyway. it. I know, right? <laughs> and so I decided I would just like not tell him. Turns out he bitches and moans and whines and complains. Now, if I told him it was you, he'd be happy about it. It's just the point that like he's going to bitch and moan and complain no matter what I do. So. Yeah. I get it. <laughs> I understand. Do you really understand? I mean, you well, mean, probably mean, not mean at the level you do, but yeah, I, I, think, I get it. I think we should let you go hang out with him for a while. <laughs> he made me walk through the expo twice. Oh, well, man. Once last night and once today. I, it, and with when you're walking, you try, I try to hide behind him. Yeah. And, and you're walking through the expo. Everybody's got to stop and say hello. Yeah. And then I... I just head nod. I'm like, hey, how you doing? Yeah. That, that's it for me. And we're good. That's like, good. I acknowledge your existence. Yeah. You acknowledge mine. We're good. I'm much Let's like that. On. No, he's got a star. I'm like, hey, man, how you doing? <laughs> now, the funny ones, the funny ones are people that were angry at him. Yeah. And or talking shit. <laughs> he will walk straight up to him and be like, hey, buddy, how you doing? Shake their hand. Give them a for half you. A hug and stuff. No, no, he's trolling him. He's trolling I get it. No, that's it why I said good really for you. Uncomfortable, especially if they're smaller. Now, <laughs> yeah, it's not often that you see a guy bigger than Lucas. But Lucas is a big guy, a big guy. Yeah, yeah. But even the big guys will come up, and they're they all all of them. The eyes get wide, and they're like, <laughs> "Hi, Lucas, how you doing?" Now they were just like a couple days ago talking shit on the internet. Yeah, and you know you. I, a lot of people talk shit, and you you don't engage. You're just like, eh, you know, say whatever you, you just, want. You just kind of dust it off. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're you, don't, you can you don't, believe what you, you want. Don't you don't cry over it. Yeah. A lot yeah. of people do. You don't do, get though. upset. I, it's, people are going to yeah. believe I what they want to believe. They're going to yeah. say what they want to say. But the ones that that talk shit, and and sometimes he's in a bad mood, and he'll jump on, and he will engage. Not fully engages in arguing, but he'll just. He'll just throw a throw counter, a little, yeah, a a counter narrative yeah. out there, yeah. Yeah. and he'll just be like, "Well, it's like this, also," and and they'll go back and forth sometimes, or he'll just throw it out there and just leave it. Um, but then watching him shake hand is always hilarious because at the very next conference, out comes the hand like they we're the best friends in the whole wide world, <laughs> and I can't, I I can't do that. I can't do that. It's not. I don't get bothered by somebody talking shit it doesn't matter yeah i don't i don't care but if like if i kind of know you're a skis bag because you've done skis bag things not mm-hmm. rumors like you know something went down at the shop and the guy you know was sleeping with his employee's wife and then fired him and then di- the wife ended up divorcing oh, geez, and yeah. then there's kids involved and you're like you're that guy like I, I am not gonna walk up to you and be like, "Hey, buddy, how you doing?" He will. He doesn't care. <laughs> it's all the same to him. Me, I'm like, "Ooh, how you doing?" <laughs> yeah. David, well, the problem is, is David can't get it off his face, right? Yeah. yeah. No, 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 I, I wear it. I wear yeah. it. Like I'll walk in yeah. there and they'll be like. He doesn't like me. <laughs> you find a game and a little bit of humor in some yes, of this, right? Absolutely. In a sick way, you know. There's just it's enjoyable. Uh, yeah, it's, in, it's yeah. I get it. Why? I don't How's hate. I don't hate people, David. I like I everyone. It's not. It's not about hating people. It's not about hating people. I, I'm annoyed that that whole conversation even happened. I'm saying it's not. It, it's just that it's emotionally taxing and exa- physically exhausting to smile and be nice. <laughs> it, it is you're a pretty hateful person i can it's see not that. about being hateful it's just it's it's, it's exhausting go mm-hmm. do a hundred push-ups and then be like hey now that you've done a hundred push-ups i need you to also carry all these boxes down it's just like i just did a hundred push-ups like, i don't want to go carry boxes and like no no it'll be fine let's go carry boxes you uh, will do the hundred push-ups and carry the boxes and be like yeah i'm carrying boxes it's so much fun i'm done after the hundred push-ups i don't want to do anything else I'm done done that's what it feels like what do you think of that i think it's funny (laughs) i think we got two different just two different brains that think two different ways you get pleasure from this and you don't and 
It works perfectly. I think it's complimentary. And it I have, does. I have two service advisors on my team that I hired on purpose like that because they work very Dude, I'm much with you. different types of clients, and they complement each other. That is that is probably the smartest thing you can do on your front counter. Yeah. Is find the personalities that work yeah. and hire those personalities around each other, mm -hmm. right? And we've, we've found that a couple different times. We're still kind of working to find the right person for the front counter to work with Jade. Like the person that, that <laughs> <laughs> I bet he doesn't even know who Jade is. Of course he doesn't know who Jade is. Would you expect him to? I guess the listeners know who Jade is. Anyway, Jade's it's his, is his service advisor. Very good. Yeah. Yeah. He, you know, he's a very technical fella and he has to like really do you enjoy through. being a shop owner. I do. Uh, we're not going to get along. <laughs> Let's now, move on hey, from that. Hey, you interrupted <laughs> me. I said most days of the week. <laughs> not every. <laughs> so uh, how do you get past the the 5 a.m.? I just woke up. I'm up. It's going to be a good day. I'm going to enjoy it today. We're going to get some work done. Yeah. I'm going to have some money come in. Everybody's going to get paid. I'm going to pay some bills. Mm -hmm. This is going to be good. Mm -hmm. And then that one star review comes in. And now, a justifiable one star review, yeah. I can take that lick, right? Like, we screwed up. Yep. This did not go well. They, It was not a good personality match, mm -hmm. right? They were expecting me to do something different than what I can provide, and they were not very understanding. But when you go above and beyond, and they're still not happy, Mm -hmm. And you you do absolutely everything you can possible, and even give them solutions outside of what you can do. Right. I may still leave you a one star review, and you're just like, what the hell? Or you thought you had a great time, like great experience. Like I, I took care of you, mm -hmm. we helped you out, everything went great. And then you just leave me a one star review. Right. <laughs> How do you get past that? That was a very hard thing for me early on, and I'm uh. I'm a person that got into this business because I care. And I think that that's a reason a lot of us do what we do every day, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, I can tell that's why we're sitting here today is because you guys care about this industry and this business. Sure. And I put everything that I owned on the line to open a shop up and, and be able to give back to people. And I care. So obviously I try to build that culture and empower that into all of my teammates and one of the and so when somebody does have that experience, it used to eat at me, right? Mm -hmm. Because you're like, I meant nothing bad with this, and I'm being accused of just yeah, like terrible stuff, terrible yeah. stuff. And you're like, this was a, a a human mistake. Like, I'm very sorry. We had a process flaw. So at first, you know, these really beat me up, and and, not, and mm -hmm. fortunately, you know, knock on wood, we haven't had a lot of these situations because I feel that we we try to learn from these things and. My team very much works together on trying to solve stuff and mm -hmm. catch stuff before it gets bad. But but I tell you what, it, it took a, a little while and so, some thickening of the skin. The longer I'm in it, it seems to get a little easier. But, you know, I think the hardest thing for me was just kind of separating. Like, we did everything in our ability. That's what I'll look at is, like, if somebody yeah. had a bad experience – Let's analyze this and try to troubleshoot it almost like a we would a thing car. Or a them thing. Right. You try to figure out where did this go wrong? And did we set a bad ex expectation up front with this guest? Was it a, a process flaw? Did we not qualify this customer to determine if they were a fit for us? Did we leave some information out? Yeah. And I I find a lot of times that a bad experience is probably something we may have been able to prevent on the front end of stuff. Yeah. Not always though, because you know, if you got it, if I'm a, get, get a little time, I'd like to give you an example of a, a situation that we yeah. were in. And this one like really struck a chord with me and it was wild how this thing evolved. Um, so we, we had a vehicle come in, a guy made an online appointment. Um, mm -hmm. and this was a, the first day that my newest service advisor started with us. Yeah. So, um, I have two advisors on the counter. One of the guys has been with me almost, you know, since we were a year in business and our, our, our shop's been open three and a half years. So this guy's been with me quite a while. We built a lot of processes together. Um, so we, we hired our newest advisor and it's his first day on the job. So obviously I'm up at the counter with him and, yeah. and we're working. And so 
we had, and the guy ended up dropping the vehicle off overnight. So anytime we get a drop off, we're always making verbal contact in the morning just make to make sure they know that to, hey, we've got the car. Yeah, because we he created an online appointment. We've never had any verbal comfort, you know, conversation yeah. with this gentleman to discuss our yeah. processes, what this looks like. So I get on the phone with him because it's, you know what you know how it goes. People will make an appointment for one thing and then they'll add on five others, right? Yeah, kind of typical. Yeah. So I just called him and kind of ran him through the process. I ran him through all the price. You know, yeah. here's how this is going to work. And, oh, okay. So what, you know, and he kind of gives you a little bit of back and forth questioning and I explain it. And and I said, so here's what I'm going to do is I'm going to, and I had a little bit of a feeling with this, with this gentleman. Yeah, you get that. You get that. So feeling. I wasn't good with verbal authorization. And so I ended up sending him, I said, Hey, I'm going to send you an authorization via email and text yeah. through the shop management system. I need you to read through this. And once we yeah. get that back, then we can begin, begin work on this. Yeah. And, uh, and so he approved it almost immediately. Cool. We're going to get to work on it. Yeah. All right. So we, we get go through and we did everything that we talked about. Um, at that point, uh, my other advisor had kind of stepped in because, you know, I was working with the new guy. We went and did some other stuff. And, you know, yeah. now we very much like kind of separate tickets out. Like if one yeah, advisor sure. starts to finish, we were still kind of transitioning. So the other advisor stepped in. I filled him in on what was going on and he called. And I guess the guy was a little hesitant that, oh, it was just a blown fuse. Well, yeah. I don't know if we did the greatest job conveying that conveying. yeah and I, I have stepped slapping i lost a good client over something like that yeah. and it was a deal where it took four and a half five hours to work back through the system to find why the fuse had blown right but in his mind it was still a blown fuse and you charged me four hundred dollars yeah right and, so, that, and that was the, the the classic example here was yeah. um so where this got a little bit weird at is he also brought the vehicle in and it was it was a ford pickup and he said it had a rattle noise on startup you know we're real familiar with a lot yeah. of that so he yeah. said you know and i have the call so i when i'm talking to him on the phone he goes you know i'm, I'm not planning on keeping this pickup and he goes i, I know this is going to be an expensive repair so if you can just give me an estimate to what it would be to yeah. to replace that and you know we kind of know there's a, bul a service bulletin for that concern on that vehicle yeah. so you know, I just valid, you know, it was kind of, I felt I was doing this guy a little bit of a service. I wasn't charging him to fully look into this issue. I'm going to kind of diagnose yeah. it. I'm going to give him an estimate and hopefully this is kind of cool. It's a first time guest. I'm going to try to take care of him. You know, that's my thought process. Yeah. So we put an estimate together to do this work and uh guy comes in, wasn't real happy, you know? Yeah. You could tell he was just kind of like agitated right. when he came to pick the vehicle up. Um, and my advisor went over the estimate with him for that repair then, because again, he told us that he's probably getting rid of this vehicle. I don't want to keep it. It's too old. Um, didn't seem very happy that he had to pay the, the assessment fee to replace the fuse. He, I don't know why you guys are charging me that to do the, to replace yeah. a fuse. We'd gone through all of our technicians document, all of their yeah. work with a story that is on on the invoice so yeah. that way that we can sell the value and convey what we did so not even 15 minutes later one star review on google comes across yeah and the guy just tore us up mm -hmm. i paid a hundred and some odd dollars and to get a fuse a replaced fuse. yeah and then they tried to charge me a hundred dollars for an oil change yeah the other thing that made me mad was that these guys are six hundred dollars higher than the dealership is to do a job on my engine. Yeah. He goes, "What kind of shop is higher than the dealer? Can you believe that?" Right. And it just went to town. It was a paragraph. Yeah. And it blew me away. And I'm like, "What in the world do I do here?" Yeah. I was just like, I mean, it's just like knife to the chest, dude. It hurts. It like really does not feel nice. I'm like, we did everything we could here. Yeah. To try to do this right in the best of our abilities at that point in time. Yeah. So I try to call the guy and he won't answer. You know, that's what I'm going to try to do right away is we're going to try to get this resolved. Right. But I also don't want to act in emotion in the moment. You yeah, know, I try to give sure. it a, I try to give this a little bit of time for me to process mm -hmm. this, think about what yeah. the, the customer 
experience was to to have him feel that way that he needed to do that without coming back in to try to discuss or yeah. like get a little more information. But I figured, you know, I just so what I did was I just typed up a what you have to do at that point is you got to reply and you've got to let the public see because this is an awful review, yeah, especially sure. being a, a new business. We we at that time we'd only been open a little over two years. Yeah. And I'm still trying to gain traction and get steam rolling in our community. And like, I'm big in the community and I don't want to be seen that I'm for sure doing any sort of bad and that, business and those, with anybody. Those replies are always to the others that are looking at them. That's what it is. It's never, ever, ever to the person who wrote the review. And I've, I've learned a lot of that, you know, through, through these Facebook groups that you like with you guys and you yeah. see a lot of how people react and you learn and, yeah, I and, didn't and, quite see that at first. Yeah, and when you see the other people respond, and they respond negatively, and you're from the outside looking in, you're like, "Ooh, I don't want to be that guy." Yeah, you know that that's the that's the best lesson when it comes to like seeing somebody's negative response. Yeah, man, there there's some bad ones too. There are, and we've yeah. got a shop in town, and they're very notorious. The owner will go on there, and he will just start just. I mean, there will be profanities in it, and it it gets awesome. ugly, and I'm just like, yeah. All right, good for you, but I don't right. want to be viewed as that. I don't want to be that guy. I don't so want to be that guy. So you type up a response. So I type a response up. Um, I, I actually, what I did, because I was just so blown away, is I got I got a hold of my business coach first, and I just said, hey, I want to yeah. run you through this. I'm looking for a little bit of advice here. This is the first time I've had been in this situation. What do I do? Yeah. So he kind of talked me off the cliff a little bit and kind of said, Hey, think about this and this when you reply. But he needs, he goes, You need a reply on there today. Yeah. Do not let that sit. Get something out there. You need to, and, and that's what he had told me as well is like, You're going to reply so others see how you yeah, handle for this. Sure. So I crafted up a reply and it was, You know, I'm very sorry. We tried to, couldn't meet, we couldn't meet your standards. Um, I would like to have an in-person conversation with you at your convenience. I'd like you to come to the shop. I want to discuss what went wrong, how we can make this right. Yeah. I said, I'm very sorry, too, that you do not feel that our quote for that engine repair was an acceptable price. I said, if we are $600 more than the dealer, the dealer is not doing the same job that we are doing. Yeah, and I exactly. want you to have you come in here so we can review this estimate together. Yeah. I put my personal cell phone number on there. Yeah. And I even called it out. This is my personal cell phone number, which I was very uncomfortable doing. Yeah, for but sure. But I felt like it would make a statement to the public that yeah, that's this, what Google th Voice is for. Yeah. yeah. And uh I, you know, I'm just trying to show these people that I really care here. Yeah. So I mean, I'm just blood pressures through the roof for like yeah. 24 hours because I'm just like looking at my phone. I'm like, okay, when's this guy going to call? When's this guy going to call? Yeah. Okay. Did he ever call? So a week go comes and goes, nothing. Mm -hmm. I go to Apex in 2022 mm -hmm. and he modified his response and tore us up even more in it. Nice. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> he went to some other shop and they were like, I don't know. What, is that yeah. what happened? So it was after I replied, and then he, then he, I think he knows how to work the game. So I looked this, yeah. you know, you can click on their their Google profile, and that was eighty percent of his reviews were one stars, tearing everybody yeah, yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. So some people too with with Google, they will if they see these one star reviews, it, any they'll opportunity click, to yeah, they'll yeah, and and but you know that's what I look at too when I'm evaluating a business. I go back to the person who left the review. I'll look yeah. at the one stars. I'll see okay, this person looked pretty irate and hostile. Let's go see if it's like. A trend. I, yeah. I I'm analytical, and I want to see that sometimes. For sure. But I also look at at how the business operator replies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this is so we we didn't hear a word, like you said, nothing nothing came of it. But I've got this one star review just lingering out there that I just didn't it just didn't sit good with me. Mm -hmm. All right. Ten months later, my cell phone rings, and I've got this guy's like name just burned into yeah, my brain yeah. you know because it's like eating I, you alive yeah and what we did with that experience though transformed our business because we looked at everything that could have went wrong there and we wrote an sop for it and figured out how to prevent that from ever happening sure. again now you can't prevent giving somebody an estimate and them being yeah, but yeah. we were looking at okay 
why is this guy complaining of my oil change price? Well, because he was going somewhere down the street that was 30 bucks maybe. Yeah. He knew the yeah. price and authorized it. Yeah. So we just did a better job up front explaining what sets our service why is apart. Our, we're doing a oil service, a not service, an oil change. Correct. Yeah. We are going to s sell a set of tests on this vehicle, and we are going yeah. to make sure that guest understands what we did thoroughly. Yeah. yeah. Um, so 10 months later, cell phone rings, and I see, you know, not, not all calls will come up with caller ID, but this guy's name yeah. popped up, and I said, I don't know if I can use profanity here, but of I, course. I said, holy shit. <laughs> yeah. I, I let it go to voicemail. I'm going to be honest because I was so caught off guard. This is the end yeah. of the day Friday. And you know, Friday, sometimes it's just, we're a Monday through Friday shot. And so it's hectic. And we're a little bit hectic. Out. Yeah. And I'm trying to help a guy on a car. You know, I'm still very active with, with training my team. And I'm, I'm not actively working on cars all day, but I'm very much in the shop coaching and guiding. And I needed a minute to, to think about. Yeah. I wasn't going to avoid this guy's call, but I needed a little bit of time. I'm not a quick wit, and I need a little bit of time to, to think slow stuff the, through. Mm -hmm. Slow the thought process down, kind of get a, a grasp yeah. on what you think is getting ready to happen. Yeah. So yeah. what do I do again? Phone a friend, call the coach up, and I say, hey, here's the deal. You remember that review? Yeah. And I said, what would you do here? I just, I'm, I got a plan. Let me run it by you. But I said, yeah. what would you do? And he goes, I would, I'd ask the guy what... Well, he, he called and he, he goes, I would just figure out why, why did the guy call you? Because his yeah. voicemail said, hey, this is, I did listen to his voicemail. He left me one. Hey, this is, I'm not going to say his name, so-and-so. Um, you guys looked at my Ford back in last year. He goes, you gave me an estimate for an engine repair, and I want to have you guys do the work. Oh, <laughs> my God. You see where this is starting to just get insane, right? Yeah. yeah. After you just blew me up. And so, you want me to work on your car now. And you want me to do this work now. All right. So call the coach up. And he goes, I would just ask him what changed between now and 10 months ago that uh, you want us to do the work now, but you badmouthed us so bad. I, I don't want you to tell me if I'm right or wrong. Okay. I'm just going to, um, from personal experience, I'm going to put out there that my vote is that he took it to the dealership. And they went to fix it, and then they said, oh, by the way. <laughs> and so I'll let you go ahead and finish. <laughs> so so I call him back, and it's this is within 20 minutes of him calling. I just said, hey, I'm very sorry. I was helping a technician. Thanks for your patience. How's it going? You know, I just, I'm yeah. trying to be cordial, much like we were talking here earlier. I didn't, I did, yeah. this guy's caused a little bit of hell in my life because I personally yeah. dwell on this stuff. So this last year, I've had this review hanging out there. Now this guy wants to call and have us do this work. Yeah. And I just, that's what I asked him. I said, you know, let's talk a little bit. Tell me what's changed between now and then that, I mean, you left us a pretty nasty review out there. I immediately responded. I wanted to try to work this out with you to see where, where we went wrong. But I said, I also want you to know that based on that review we changed a lot of internal processes to prevent anybody yeah. from having an experience like that again yeah so i just took a little bit of ownership there even though i don't yeah. necessarily feel i was in the full wrong i do think we did things wrong for sure never say we're perfect well you know i just hear you guys do good work and i i don't trust the shop down the street to do it so so the guy's nuts the guy was nuts yeah so that wasn't the answer I was looking for. Yeah. I was looking for, hey, I, 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 had, I was suffering from something. I'm on medication now. I was going nah, through a divorce. Was, you know, I'm looking for something there that was yeah, a little that, bit of logic. Yeah. And there is none. And I told him, I said, all right, we looked at this vehicle, and I hadn't quite made a decision if we... To be honest, I didn't want this guy in my business. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, but I'm yeah, trying yeah, to mitigate. No. I'm trying to mitigate this thing a little bit. Yeah. He also made a comment too in this conversation, and he goes, "I really feel bad about the review that I left out there, and I don't feel right about it." And he goes, "I'm going to take the review down." Okay. And I said, "All right." I said, "But here's the thing." I said, "If I ever, you know, if we do do business again." I want an opportunity to correct an issue before you do go publicly blast blast us for yeah. stuff. I said that's the type of people we want to work with here because I'm I have I'm a person with dignity and pride and I care and I want a chance yeah. to be able to to make things right. 
So I said, here's the deal, Scott. I said, I want to think about this over the weekend. I said, we, we haven't looked at this truck in 10 months. I don't know what additional damage has been done to the vehicle yeah. so, with you driving it in that manner. And I said, I, I'm not sure I, I want to work on it. But I said, that was 10 months ago. Let me go back and, and check prices again. And I said, I'll call you Monday. Yeah. Because if he didn't like my pricing... What, what it's, it's gone go, up by now. My yeah. labor rate's gone up a bunch in a year. You know, I've gone up because I've had to do, you know, yeah. we weren't charging accordingly and now we know what we're doing. And every, you know, we raised our rates to be where we need to be in the market. And mm -hmm. so I thought about it over the weekend and I'm waiting to see, you know, is this guy really going to pull this review down? And he did, believe yeah. it or not, he took it off there completely. And then I went into his profile and he took a bunch of one star reviews off. What in the world? I don't know what the, what he's gone through. But something must have happened in his life. And so I decided to not have my team reestimate the job. Okay. What we did, though, to go back to your statement, Lucas, is we checked the Carfax. Yeah. Two days prior to him calling me, it had been somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> so I have to assume it was. He took it, got a price. Yep. The, the issue had gone downhill. Yep. And so he took it and he got a price and he didn't like the price. And now all of a sudden your price is better than their price. And I knew that this was the game being played here and that I needed yeah. to really tread my, you know, I needed to walk this one on a tight rope. And so yeah. I, I called him back Monday as I promised. And I was just going to tell him I respectfully declined to do this job at this point. And, yeah. um, any, you know, I was kind of taught as well, you know, if you can't do something for somebody, tell them what you, you know, if you don't want to do it find somebody that can. So yeah. Fill that void. I've, I've got a shop that I would send him to that I do trust a little bit, and I would just give him a little bit of a clean slate with this guy. Maybe they can build a relationship with him. And yeah. so I called him, and I mean, all weekend, I'm just a little bit nervous over this yeah. still. I'm just yeah. kind of a naturally a little bit of a it's worry. Like, it's like you're going to fire an employee and you can't sleep yeah, the night before. It, kind this of deal. is about the first conversation as a business owner yeah. that I've really had to get into here. Yeah. We, we are very fortunate with where we're at in our community that we have a lot of great customers yeah. like they it, it's just a great demographic the people care they love doing business with us because we have a small town feel but we also offer i feel an exceptional service we're using a lot of things you know dvis which nobody has used in our area yeah, for and that sure. was a game changer for us but uh so i called him on a monday i left him a voicemail Friday afternoon again, he calls me back. So I go all week just wondering, like, how's this, how's gonna, this gonna go? go? How's yeah. this gonna go? And I'm kind of, and then I figured he wasn't gonna call me back. You know, I figured he just had guilt. He pulled the review Friday afternoon. He calls the shop, called the shop line instead of my cell phone because he deleted the review and probably didn't have my cell phone number saved anymore. Yeah. And so my advisor walks upstairs. So I, I, my, I have a, a desk up on a mezzanine. It kind of oversees the shop. Yeah. And I don't have a dedicated office, but. And he goes, Hey, it's so and so. I'm like, let's get it on, you know? Let's Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I just told him, I said straight up, I said, Hey, and this I was kind of worried how this was gonna go. Right. But I just I told him, I said, Hey, you know, I'm gonna respectfully decline this repair. I don't feel that I don't want to set an expectation for you and have you upset with me again. This vehicle's been driven a little too long. Yeah. I don't feel comfortable giving you an estimate, but here's what I can do is I can refer you to another shop that I trust and that's great. Thank you very much. And, and that's that where that it. ended. Isn't that... <laughs> you know... I, I, that's a weird deal. I see in my head the number of reviews that I've gotten over the years, um, especially negative ones in the number of shops that I've talked to and the number of shops that I've worked with that get a review. There's a plethora of reasons. And two, maybe three of them are actually that the shop did something wrong. The rest of them are personal issues with the individual leaving the review. I have a little bit of an issue with, and and it is the world that we live in, but I have an issue with review platforms that don't even verify that that person had been at that business yeah, and make sure that it's a legitimate review. But there's thousands of reasons that someone may leave a negative review. The reality of it is, is 1% of those is because they had a bad experience, right? Mm -hmm. The rest of them or they did not talk to me the way that I wanted to be talked to. I didn't feel like I got the value. And if you go back and you review the situation, it's BS. It's it, it's absolutely inaccurate. And it makes me think of of one in particular. We had one um, a while back, and I've I've had negative reviews, and and we don't have that many of them. Like thank three. God. 
because I don't dad voice my clients. Um, <laughs> I never had one that I dad voiced. Leave me a bad review. <laughs> <laughs> the, the the ones that stand out to me is is I had um, I had one leave me a bad review because when we do the DVI, we drive the car a minimum of three miles, right? Yeah. Every single time. We had one come in for a state inspection, and this dude, and, and he made the appointment online. I shared with him our process, and that's something I wish Stephen from Auto Ops would do, is like when you make the appointment, if there were to be like a little list that we could verify we followed up if the client made the appointment, so we can just check it off the list and make that gone, because that's something that advisors miss often, is a client booked appointment. If you don't have a system that tracks that and they know they booked their own appointment, yeah, we have to call the client that booked their own appointment. We cannot just let that go. We have got to call them. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. And so um, what, this guy why? comes. Because if you don't set the expectation of what their experience is going to be like in your shop and let them know what. Okay, but then let them figure that out when they drop it off. Like, hey, this is what I would much rather get. I would much rather get them out of my hair because you're going to do exactly what Mike Allen is doing. They're going to show up and thinking they're getting something for free. And then you're going to end up saying, well, actually, the testing is. I don't think any reasonable person walks in thinking that it's this so is funny going you say to cost that. It is, $0. It is zero dollars. It is so cents. funny you say that because I was talking to Jade a while back and she said, when I worked at the vet office, she said, we didn't even have to tell people the price because they knew they would have a bill. She said, I've never worked in an industry where people expect the repair or the testing or whatever mm-hmm. to be free. And she said, they walk through this door every single day and don't realize they're going to have to pay a bill. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. I think you're wrong. Anyway, <laughs> that's a, that's all I wanted to say about that. Um, <laughs> on the- <laughs> well, you didn't let me finish what I was saying. And I don't care what you have to say, so shut up. Um, so the this gentleman, I talked to him. I explained the process. I said, hey, we're very thorough. We actually do the state inspection. There's a lot of shops that just pass the state inspection. We don't do that here. We're going to drive the car. We're going to check the car out. We're going to make sure it's safe and reliable. And I do this not only because I want your car to be safe for you, but you pass my wife, my daughter, and my son on the road. You bet. And so it's very important to me that your vehicle's safe. Yeah. And he said, oh, wow, that's really phenomenal. That's fantastic. Great. Appreciate it. You know, it's a fairly new car, so I don't think you'll find anything. Well, they take the car out and drive it. I'm out of town, and dude shows up screaming at my staff. Oh, no. Because we drove his car, and we're not qualified to drive Teslas. And if there was a problem with his car, he would take it to Tesla. And dude just absolutely flipped out. Now, he's a doctor. Okay, you go look at his reviews. Every single one of them is the same thing. He didn't get exactly what he wanted, exactly when he wanted, exactly how he wanted. I'll never forget, man. I had this experience years ago. Yeah, when I was working at the hospital. Are we shifting stories? We we, hold up. We had this radiologist, (laughs) and this dude was so effing mad. He's screaming at me, telling me what a dumbass I am for not being able to fix his computer. It's because it wasn't plugged in, (laughs) right? And so these people, typical. Uh, some of these people just act that way. Yeah. Right. And they're entitled and they believe they deserve something. They, they, whatever it may be. And I've learned something about people. They will leave you a bad review because they did something that embarrassed themselves in your facility. Got it. Yeah. They said or did something stupid. Now, here's a plot twist. Here's the plot twist. Okay. On the Tesla, they can monitor like all the yeah. cameras on their app. That's right. And then they can see that. His employees were ripping up and down the mountain in, in the Tesla, racked up 12 miles on this brand new Tesla, going into psycho mode. What do they call it? Ludicrous. Ludicrous but that did mode. Not happen. It just went. Did you verify? Zero to mm-hmm. 60 in one point. And here's the thing. Here, poor Lucas. Uh, I feel yeah. bad for him. And now no, he's don't. like, we didn't do anything wrong. Yeah. And then like a year later, he posted this video on the facebook group and he's like i don't know why this guy's mad we drove this thing perfectly fine on a qc test drive right he's driving this thing around pulls out on this and just floors it and this thing was a what was it a diesel or something like that now he gets and he posts this video thinking he did nothing wrong nothing wrong i see that one second clip going if this were my modified diesel and I dropped this vehicle off 
at the shop and go, hey, uh, you know, do your thing. Yeah. And on a test drive, on my dash cam, I see the employee just lay into it. I'm going to be annoyed. And I'm like, hey, was it... Did, was there a reason you, why you just used half a tank of fuel just to rip down the street just did you, so you could feel that pull? Like, get your own. You <laughs> did you know that he only hit maybe half throttle in that car? That was actually a 5 Coyote Mustang. Was I love your automotive I have no, I have no idea. That. I heard whistling. No. There was no whistle? That's just how loud it is. Dude, he, he barely even cracked the throttle. I when don't know, pulled, dude. Not, he's saying that. I'll, I'll send you the video. You can watch right. the video on the Facebook the, group, right. and I'm just telling you, it's and everybody is on there like, oh, Lucas, you're so wonderful. Blah, 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 blah. If but it had been they, his shop, they would have problem. ripped him a new asshole. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, I know, probably. But they didn't get past the like 30 seconds. Like It's, it's, it's like three and a half minute long video, and, yeah. but it's a little bit in there. He pulls out, and you can – It he he laid into it harder than he should, Dude, is what I'm the, saying. The ground was wet. If he had laid into it, the one spot I had a problem with when he did that was he's in the corner, right? And so, like, he goes across the yellow line a couple times coming down the hill. But, I mean, it's a tiny little narrow road, yeah. right? But he when he goes through the corner as he pulls off of the parkway, he's getting ready to get on 321, he steps in a little bit harder than he should have coming around that corner. Now, when he pulled out, what you don't know is on the other side of that is a completely blind corner. Mm. You can't see what's coming. And there's a bridge. And so when he pulled out, he realized, hey, a car's coming. I need to get into it a little bit. What you heard is that car is loud as F, dude. I mean, uh -huh. you you start that car, and it will bust your F and eardrums. He's I got get freaked out foam, by dash cams. He's got foam pool needles, noodles that he puts in the car because his apartment was going to kick him out. Because if he doesn't put those foam pool noodles in the exhaust, it's so loud that it literally rattles people's houses when he starts the car. <laughs> That's <one>. awesome. <laughs> and so he take he you know when he pulls out, dude. If he had been over half throttle, that car would have spun. It's a tuned car. And so when he pulled out, he just stepped into it because a car came flying around the corner up behind him. I wasn't happy with how he drove it. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, I, I wasn't that, happy that, with. There his. was nothing wrong with the test drive other than that one spot. And so I'm saying there's a trend here. There's a trend because this isn't the first time of, hey, I don't like how you guys right. drove my car on the test drive. I see that. This is the second time. Now, a normal person, you, you're, you seem analytical, what you were portrayed. You stay, take a step back and go, well, maybe, hey, guys, like quarter throttle, 100% of the time, unless we're trying to duplicate a problem. The, uh, when, that's when the they, policy. So the policy is, is that when they drive the car, they dictate how they're driving the car. Right, the that's what they're and mean. so that's why he didn't post the other video or didn't reach out with the other video, is because the technician, when the technician drove that car that you're talking about, mm. he was talking about what he was doing, why he was doing it, where he was going, where he was turning at, while he was driving the vehicle, while he was driving the vehicle, and so that is our policy. But he was doing shop. that for the dash cam. He was doing that for the dash cam, and mm. that that's what they do. That is their rule when they're driving a car. They call that they're on the road over the radio. They tell everybody, hey, here's where I'm going. So if something happens and they don't come back, we know that they were on the road. Is that a thing? Yeah. Right. If you break down on the road, because we don't have cell phone service in some areas. Yeah, oh, I see that. Yeah, yeah that can well, be. That, so that's a true thing. Yeah. We have a we have a dedicated test drive route. There's a three mile, there's a five mile, and there's a 10 mile. Yeah. And so everybody knows where that's at and knows where somebody would be if they don't call or something happens. We know where the dead zones are up through there. We know every bit of that process. The the two environments, this dude showed up when he saw his car move. He wanted us to walk out to the car and pass the inspection. They just moved his car, right? He didn't even expect them to drive his car. He wanted them mm. to walk out and inspect it, okay? The so Tesla. The Tesla. Yeah. And it, it was nothing was out of the way. He, he even shows me the trip. He, like, screenshots it, and he's like, you drove my car two miles. And on the... Th Screenshot, it shows the max speed was the speed limit, mm -hmm. right? Like, it was obvious they hadn't, hadn't done anything weird or wrong. It didn't show anything, any alerts. Card or acceleration or anything like yeah. that. Mm -hmm. So, sus. Anyway. <laughs> You're sus. <laughs> <laughs> this sounds like a whole lot of copium is all I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> because here's the thing. Uh, if it's just a blown fuse, I will do it for free. Mm -hmm. Like I don't care. Like, we you right up? It? It's like customers. But if you're doing the testing crap. to get to the blown fuse, bro. What's the, dude? This this circuit is not. There's a problem with this circuit. Step one: Is there a fuse in the circuit? No, dumbass. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying if I've got to find out why I'm overcurrent, 
Right. Here's the problem, though. You're right. So the next step, I put the fuse in there. Mm-hmm. What are you doing? Check. You're checking amperage. Well, right. There's a motor. There's a something. A solenoid. Something. And in I'm that happy circuit. to call them and tell them and before I move forward. That's my. No, no, that's no, no, how no, I avoid no, no. that. Well, not always though, because they're they're gonna be like, oh, a fuse. Great. Okay. Click. They think fixed. They don't understand. There's hey, more to it. There's more to this. So you tell the technician, proceed with the testing. Now, if there's a failed component in there, like, hey, the this is a 10-amp circuit, that thing is hitting 8 amps. Pull. Now, on a 10-amp circuit, there shouldn't be anything at any point hitting more than 4 to 5 amps. Mm-hmm. It's supposed to be half of whatever the fuse max is. Your inrush will be over, but your sustained will be less. Yes. Well, even the inrush, though, shouldn't be tickling the the 10 amp fuse it should be Mm -hmm. low enough that at no point do we pop a fuse because some of these are components are critical to the running of the vehicle like so if the technician comes back and goes hey this thing's at eight on a 10 amp circuit Mm -hmm. we're selling them a new component and hey blown fuse Mm -hmm. with this failed component this component is worn we need yeah 100 percent of the time and then the whole discussion of we fixed it with the fuse gets thrown out right now i have both a blown fuse and a reason for a blown fuse Mm -hmm. and that ends that discussion entirely tell me the reasons that a fuse may blow i don't know why what what do you mean i want to know the reasons that a fuse may blow i let the technician tell me why the fuse would have blown but you just said just replace the component well yeah but you still do voltage drop tests and stuff because you do your full testing now, if he gets in there and he's like, and he he checks the circuit, and he checks the components of the circuit. Now, where where I will throw this out there is um, that works if the circuit is simple enough. Mm-hmm. If it's a hey, I replace this. There's a 50 amp fuse up front that's blown, and it powers 7,500 things on the car. It's like okay, well, we can go hunting, and that's where I'll call a customer and be like, we can go hunting, or we can see if this will hold. Yeah, go ahead and see if it mm-hmm. holds great. Most of the time, they don't want us to, and we don't really want to either because, like, what do you even do? I'm not checking 7,500 components. I don't want to charge you $1,000. Anyway, we will replace the component and the fuse, and that ends that whole discussion. If it the component up. is over current. If it does not, if he checks it, and he's like, dude, this thing re- is it's humming, it's perfect, it's yeah. pulling four amps, freezies. Sure. Freezies. Like I'm not, I don't care that the technician, he, my technician takes pictures of lab scopes mm-hmm. and he writes up this whole, like it's a whole. Pictures of lab dog, scopes? Why didn't he screenshot la- it? The, well, yeah. No, 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 you take a picture of the screen. Take yeah, but then it's got all the glare in it and it's not very clear and you can't draw on it and show him what's going on. It seems cheap and lazy. It's not. It's fine. You know why? Nobody even looks at it. Nobody even looks at it. It's for us. Anyway, mm-hmm. the paragraphs in there. It, the customer doesn't care. You bet. All they hear is you replace the fuse. That's mm-hmm. all they hear. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter how much of a story you put in there. A hundred percent of the time they will hear, oh, they just, you paid $120 for a fuse? Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know what fuse. And now now they feel stupid. Now you're an idiot. You're The shop's an idiot for making them feel stupid. And now they just bad mouth you, even if they don't leave you a bad review. Mm-hmm. Even if they left happy. I can see that. Oh. Even if they left happy. Because you did your due diligence in explaining mm. the whole thing. When they reiterate the story. To when somebody they, else. To, to and somebody they else. Say, and we're like, yeah, man, you're a dummy. I can see that. Oh, yeah. And then all of a sudden, they're bad-mouthing you to everybody ever mm-hmm. because they were made to feel stupid over that whole situation. Yeah. Even though you did everything right and you explained it to them and they left happy. Mm-hmm. No, do not charge them for the fuse. Well, There's it, no winning. The, the, it, it comes down to... Especially with the the things that weigh on a business owner's mind are the bad reviews, the screwed up cars, the things we didn't fix. We often don't realize there's thousands of happy clients to go along with the one upset. Oh, client. don't! I'm not. But we're not, this is not going to be a white pill. Don't white pill this. We're going to black pill you. We're going to black pill you. We're going to black pill you hard. All right. You're three years in. Yeah. This is one incident. Yep. Now multiply that one incident I, by a hundred times here in the, over the next ten years. Mm-hmm. This is going to happen more than once. Yeah. That I hate to tell you was light. Yeah. 
That Wait. was light. Wait. Wait until you get the phone call. Mm-hmm. They just gave you five thousand dollars. You just did time and chains water pump and some shit on some Ford Explorer because you know water pump, right? And so you did all this stuff, and they're like, "Hey, we're about to take this to Colorado." And you're like, "Oh, great! This sounds wonderful." And you tell them they better not mother effing break down. You double, triple, quadruple check, yeah. make sure everything. I want this thing on a fifteen mile test drive. Pull it back in, check for leaks. Okay, no problem. They do it. They do it. Mm-hmm. That effing car. That effing car breaks down somewhere in between freaking Durango and County and freak. Who cares? Yeah, you're out in the middle of nowhere, and you you get the call or the email saying, "Hey, I broke down. It's overheating." And you just touched the car, and they just paid you all this money. Mm-hmm. That 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 sucks. Have you had that yet? No. Oh man, it'll it's happen. Oh coming, man, yeah. and it's on it'll a Friday happen. evening. It's Saturday. It's you always wake the up, worst you're time. Like, yeah, huh? you're gonna wake up and like I'm gonna have a great weekend. I'm gonna make pancakes for my kids, and they're gonna love the pancakes. I'm gonna make smiley face. Do you ever do the? Mm-hmm. No, you don't cook. Do you cook? A little bit. So I, I'll like I'll not make pancakes. The, so I'll make the pancake, yeah. giant pancake, and then you shape. You take some fruit, you cut it up, you shape it like an animal okay. face. And then and then you pour the syrup and they, they it's a face wash and yeah. they eat and they're giggling the whole time. It's wonderful. Anyway, you make that and you're like, this is gonna be a great day. And then that email comes in. And then you're yeah. the asshole because you're in a terrible mood going, Mother I've been car. And yeah. you didn't do anything wrong. It was just the car decided to give up the ghost on some random component. Just because it got jostled, because you put it on a lift and put it, put it back down ten and times, it, and and that that's the reality is that happens, right? And mm-hmm. and on top of that, we have other shops against us, right? It, you know, it's like yeah. The, then they take it down to the shop, and then the shop's like, "Oh, they screwed you over. Yeah, I would have done were, that. I would done that time and chain for twenty five hundred. <laughs> well, and I mean, just, it, it's like the the last bad review I got got taken down, and it was because the the lady who had the car right she was supposed to, she brought it in she needed it back on friday the loose bolt lady and she was supposed to bring it back the following day mm. well all we did right we did a piece of mind on the vehicle we went over it i sent her the pictures i said hey did you get a chance to look at that shit i don't have service i'm like well you want to look at these things you want to take a, a look and see what it is you'd want to do and go over everything hey this is about the noise that you heard and and went through the whole list was well, i i told her all of this work that was just done, just take it back to the place that just did the work, a Mr. Tire, and get them to go over these couple little things because this is related to the work they did. Yeah. She takes it back, and they say, oh, they lied to you. None of that's bad. They were trying to take advantage of you. Okay, listen here, mother. How? I got pictures. How oh, in boy. the world am I going to take advantage of someone by sending them back to get warranty work done from you because you effed the car up. Oh. How is that me taking advantage of her? Because I'm not <laughs> saying I'm going to charge her. I'm saying take it back to the people who did the work. I had one guy leave me a bad review saying that they were trying to sell me stuff I didn't need. And they were sending me pictures of vehicles that weren't even mine. It wasn't even my car, the pictures that they were sending. Oh, boy. Now, here's the thing. Yeah. So my reply to the review goes, sir. These pictures are date and time stamped. Yeah. So you get an alert saying that we are inspecting your vehicle when we start the inspection process. Mm-hmm. And you can see how long time has lapsed between when I we give sent them pictures you the, of the outside of the car. I give them. Yeah. We have pictures of the outside yeah. of the car. You can see the paint color of your vehicle in the background. You, you see what I'm saying? Right. And, right. And you're, are you saying. That I have nothing else to do. This is what I put in there. Like, I don't have time to Photoshop date and timestamp pictures just to try to sell you work. Right. There right. are enough. I think I put the statistic in there. There's like $8 billion of unperformed automotive repair work. on. Like, there is enough work on vehicles that I don't need to fake it. Right. There's too much work out there that needs to be done. Mm-hmm. And if you don't do it, great. If you do it, wonderful. Either way. Like, yeah. Are you serious? You think I'm photoshopping pictures or sending fake pictures? These people are nuts. Right. That review's still but, up. Uh, pull up my shop. You can read it. Well, wow. I mean, that one, she took that one down because she went to another shop. A third shop. A third shop. And they basically told her, like, no, nah, Lucas was right. They, The other shop is known for 
absolutely taking advantage of people. Nothing irks mm-hmm. me more than the I took it somewhere. They told me A. I went to a second shop. They told me B. And I will believe the second shop unequivocally. This is, yes, yeah, that's they true. told me the gospel truth. The first shop was trying to screw me. Why? Mm-hmm. The second shop what, told them what they the wanted reasoning. to hear. Probably, that's probably maybe, it. Yeah. Maybe, maybe, but give me the reasoning for mm-hmm. it. That doesn't make any sense because they feel more trustworthy or they were telling, like, take a step back and uh, na- yeah. analyze the situation. Are they really more trustworthy? Are they providing you pictures? Did you give you an itemized estimate? And here's the thing. This is what irks the crap out of me. Like, at no point do I get on the phone and try to sell. Mm-hmm. We don't do that. I don't do that. I send them the list of shit that needs to be done. And I said, pick the shit you want us to do. Mm-hmm. That's it. Yeah. And so at no point do they need to feel compelled to do anything. And I tell them that. Like, hey, we don't we don't call to sell you work. You just choose. And if you don't want to do anything, you hit decline all, sign the bottom, come pick up your car. Mm -hmm. That's it. And then go take it somewhere else. Have them screw it up. And you're going to get mad at me because I told you what was wrong with the car. Right. You know, and and we put so much emphasis on reviews. I mean, we really do. As an industry, we put a lot of emphasis on reviews. Because of Google. This is entirely their fault. It it is. but and Yelp, I guess too. At the end of the day, I mean, do you know how many shops that have two and three star reviews that are packed full? Of course. I mm-hmm. mean, I know a lot of yeah. shops that have it's terrible true. reviews. Do that what's are still your big chain? Full, what's your chain around you? Do you have a big one? Uh, we've got a couple. We've got three Christian brothers in our area, mm-hmm. um, and then we've got Firestones. And then we've got a locally owned family tire chain as well that has like thirty stores. And what's the name of it? It's called Jensen Tire and Auto. Oh, okay. The, and the, I guarantee the Firestone's got two two to three stars. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they're always packed. Mm-hmm. But see, a lot of that is because they're open ridiculous hours. Like, yeah. who's open on Sunday? All day. Right. And will do work on the Sunday. And so somebody's like, I got I to gotta do it on Sunday. They're going to go to the yeah. Firestone because mm-hmm. nobody yeah, else is open. That. Yeah. The Christian Brothers is... They're all independently owned, and for the most part, they're all independently yeah. owned. So it's hit or miss. You can get some skeezy Christian brothers yeah. that are just, and we've got some, we've got some great ones. Though. There, there, there are some of our listeners that are in Christian Brothers and and own Christian Brother stores and do a really good job. Yeah, well, they're not them, but there are some really skeezy ones. <laughs> yeah, what do you think about all this? I think it's interesting. I think. Uh, that's one of the things I think we just have to be aware of as people that own these types of businesses is that we are the enemy in a sense because yeah. they're coming to us and with is, a problem. Did you sign up for that? Did you sign up to be the enemy? No, but I've come. It's it's a little bit. It's always the people, right? At, at the end of the yeah. day, people need to understand that these things are deteriorating mm-hmm. just by existing. They do. Yeah. Just in the the fact that they exist, those Ferraris that are parked outside right now mm-hmm. are falling apart just being parked outside, sitting there, like all the fluids are breaking down, everything, mm-hmm. right? People don't understand that. So you get the call, like, hey, I got this 25-year-old vehicle. It only has 50,000 miles on it. It's like, okay, yeah. it's still 25 years old. Right. And so everything's rusted. Everything's destroyed. It's aged. Yeah, it's, it's done. worn. Yeah. And so it's not new. I get that it's got 50,000 yeah. miles. <laughs> that doesn't matter. They don't understand that. No. That is a foreign concept. They to just them. think of the mileage. That yes. is it. Mileage yep. is it. That's all that matters. I I think of you know, one of the big things that this makes me reflect on and think about is all the techs wanting to go start their own shop mm-hmm. and start their own business. Didn't you do that? Yeah. Why? I wanted to make I I'm kind of weird and sick in the head. Oh, we all are. That's yeah. why we started shops. Yeah. But what, uh, <laughs> I felt like which I, part yeah. of it was crazy for you? Well, the thing for me is, is, and this is where it gets weird, is because, you know, the longer you're in it, you, they, you know, these people, they have their guard up. They don't want to come to you. They're not yeah. happy when they come to you. But I just, I, I feel I have a skill set that I wouldn't use in fo- fully. Yeah. That was the biggest drive for me to go into this business. Well, well hold on now. You you had a skill set in what sense? Like you Let were me, fixing cars. Yeah. Not fixing cars, believe it or not. Okay. So I 
spent eight years as a training instructor. Oh, okay. And so I like giving back to people and helping grow people and coach sure. people. And I feel that I also have a technical skill set that is very well too. Okay, okay. So if I can apply those things together, yeah, yeah. And, and you guys know as well as I do that, you know, there's not a lot of great employers out there. We hear this yeah. all the time. Yeah. And I've worked for, for sure. some real crap heads. And, and uh, so I well, said, if I had the opportunity, I was going to open a shop, give a great service and treat employees great. And, and and here's the thing is is that's one reason to do it. Yeah. Right? That's one reason to do it. But I think a lot of these guys are doing it saying, we're going to do this so we can make the money. We're going to do this so I don't have a boss. We're going to do that's this. That's the biggest so, reason. Yeah. Right. And the the problem or the fear that I have for them is is they don't realize that instead of having one boss, they have thousands of thousands bosses of now. Them. And they, they start this thing. They pour their heart and their soul into it. And then they figure out and realize that that, 2 a.m. bad review comes in, mm -hmm. right? And and you know, talking about the reasons, one, the ones that get me is I'll get a bad review at like 2 a.m. at some point, and it's because they're sitting home slosh drunk and they're a mean drunk, and they leave you a bad <laughs> review, and all of those have been yeah. taken down, right? That was like I've, I've, I've that woke up, yeah, I've woke yeah, up and had geez. a bad review from somebody that I knew fear unlocked right and there. I, yeah, and and so the the best one that I can remember, we worked on this old guy's truck, right? <laughs> and uh, and he he's telling this story that he worked for NASA. And he was welding on space shuttles for NASA. Mm -hmm. Now, it turns out the dude was serious and was accurate and was true. But it, it when they were welding for NASA, they were supposed to be wearing these, like, protective hoods with ventilation and all this stuff. Because welding alone is dangerous. Well, you bet. But it turns out that what they were welding were these components that had already been, like, made and they were supposed to be done. And so they had put this special coating on them because they were used in the space shuttle, and they heated the the coating, and it was smoking. Well, nobody was wearing this protective gear, so it damaged him neurologically. And so dude is half-wit crazy anyway, okay? Yeah, yeah. And I'll never forget this. We fixed his truck like two times before I learned my effing lesson, and we fixed it the first time, and, and he drops it off the second time. This is like a year and a half later. He's clearly deteriorated, right? He's not cognitively where he should be. And we offered to fix his truck for him. And I said, hey, man, I'm running into town. We'll give you a ride back. I had an employee with me. We pull up. At, he says, hey, I need to go into the gas station. I want to get a beer. So I pull up to the gas station. I'm pumping gas, putting gas in the car. And, like, we're sitting there. And dude never comes back out. And so I tell my employee, I'm like, hey, go see if you can figure out where he went. Like, where did he go? And he, we turn around and look. It's been 10 minutes. Yeah. This dude randomly walks out of the gas station, gets into somebody else's car with people in it, what? sits down, and, like, the people are just sitting in the car oh looking boy. at him. Nobody's Awkward. saying a word, and he's just sitting there, right? Yeah. And so this dude would leave me a bad review and take it down, leave me a bad review and take it down, leave me a bad review and take it down, like, over and over and over again. And I don't know if Google stopped that from being a thing like <laughs> spamming reviews, but you know, and and it, I, I don't think that the techs who are thinking about starting a business think about that. They think about I'm going to go fix the car. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go. Man, I'm not going to charge as much. I'm not going to this. I'm not going to that. And everybody's going to love me. That's not that's not what this experience is like. Not at all. Not and at they, all. I, I I think that starting out. They don't understand how it impacts you. Mm -hmm. They don't see how that feels because I mean, it like makes you sick. It, it, it does. will make you physically ill. Yeah, if you let it, you know. And I don't think that that those starting businesses understand that necessarily. So I want to open a mac and cheese truck. Oh, so you can get bad reviews about how your mac and cheese I, is I won't shit. Care. You ever seen the meme with the guy that sells grilled cheese? Yeah, the one dollar grilled cheese. Uh huh. Do you know what I'm talking I about? I do. Have you seen that? Mm -mm. It's one dollar grilled cheese. It's just one dollar. Doesn't make change. So if you give them five, you get five grilled cheese. And it's nothing fancy. It's not deconstructed. It's white bread, American cheese, butter. Those are the ingredients. Mm -hmm. And that's it. That's essentially that. Mac and cheese. I'm going to have mac and cheese. And then maybe something frou-frou. But that's it. You get a bowl of mac and cheese. But, but you, you show up. I don't care whether you like it or not. They it's have a bowl the same of mac and cheese. Challenges. What's that? They have the same challenges. No. I People love that. mac and cheese. Here's the thing. Nobody loves automotive repair. So they're going to show up. 
thinking they're going to get a bowl of mac and cheese. Now, they may not like my cheese. They may not like the mac. They may not like the combination. They may think it's too hot. It's too cheesy. It's not salty enough. It's too salty. Whatever. Okay, fine. I don't care. I'm going to move on because it, it, it is what it is. But but you say that like that type of business is easier, but more restaurants fail than auto repair This shops. is a food truck. More food trucks. It's going to be a then. food trailer <laughs> so I can pull it wherever I need to. And then it's going to be, I'm going to open up and only for lunch and early dinner. And then that's it. I'm going to get the hell out. I'm done. Mac and cheese truck. You know, the way I've seen you drive over the past few days. I could not imagine you driving something with a trailer behind it. I'm just going to be completely honest with you. Is, is it that wild, huh? Uh, no, that it's not, I'm it's not, not a wild. that wild. No, oh, okay. No. We're, we're running no. 35 mile an hour, but we're also sitting at the red light for 45 <laughs> minutes while he's just like, huh, and people are blowing the horns, and he's just like, no, no. Oh. The, well, sometimes they blow the horns. I cannot, I'm waiting for, for the uh, yeah. automated driving yeah. to happen. Like, just get in the car. Yeah, he can't even drive his own car without curbing it. Can you imagine him pulling a trailer? You know, hey, look, he's going to be good for trailer tire business. I swear (laughs) to God. (laughs) Can you back a trailer? Have you ever backed a trailer? Um, As long as I have enough space. (laughs) (laughs) I let my employees do that. I got. Empl- I do. I do. Like, I'll, toss with that. The, I'll toss the keys to my employees. We're like, can you handle this? I can't back that thing up. <laughs> They're just like, <sighs> I know it is. Uh, I'm going to bring you to a, North Carolina. We're going to teach you some life skills. I got to be able to drive a trailer. That's a life. That's skill. a life. If skill, you're going to huh? have a food trailer, yeah, you're going to. No, that's true. But I can hire a driver, right? <laughs> Driving Miss Daisy. I can see it now. Two people in the truck. Hey, we're gonna we're gonna set up here this this week and sell some mac and cheese, and I'll just have a big vat of mac and cheese and whoosh, five day old mac and cheese. Yeah. <laughs> they reheated. Oh, we'll make it Why in the morning. We'll make it hard. in the morning. <laughs> no, right? Well, because they weren't cooked. <laughs> no, they turn to mush if they get old. But the, you know, every morning you make the the make the noodles, you make the cheese sauce, and go. I don't know, man. I have seen more restaurant owners more stressed out and struggle more than repair shop owners. <sighs> and what about, you what know, about I, a McDonald's, owning a McDonald's or uh, Chick-fil-A? Uh, Chick-fil-A. Uh. Chick-fil-A? I think I think back to my friend Britt, him talking about like the more money you make, the bigger the business is, right? You might be able to sit at home five days a week and not actually have to work in the business and you're you're doing the you're doing the administrative kind of thing where you're deciding where you're going as an organization. Mm -hmm. But that means that by the time those problems get to you, you're thinking about a Doug. Oh yeah. By the time that, if that problem is your problem, mm -hmm. dumpster fire now. Well, I mean, he, he, he was talking about typically the only time that he hears anything is when they lose an employer or multiple employees. Somebody's died. Yeah. Right. And he's like, you know, that that's a tough because as as the CEO of the company now, right. it's your responsibility to call the the family and tell them what happened, and you know console them and try and take how, how care big of them. is your shop? Eight bays, four techs. That's a big shop. It's big. Yeah. Who who'd you hire to coach? Bill Haas. Okay, I'm That's working awesome. with Bill currently. Yeah. But, but uh, you, it was that who who you started with? No. Who'd you start with? I, I worked with Rick White for a little bit. Okay, in a group in a group setting. Oh, okay. So you went to Rick White, now yep. Bill Haas. Yep. Not a. I'm not a huge fan of group coaching. I just I don't think group coaching is a good fit for me personally. If group it, it, coaching is cheap enough. It's not bad to. Uh, it's not a bad place to start. I see that. I just think of all the intensive knowledge, and like really in depth. I, I have some personal quirks that group coaching wouldn't have worked for. And I would have ended up not being successful because I didn't have somebody to stand there and kick my ass into gear and like push me through the things that I wasn't comfortable. That's with. where I was really at. I just needed somebody to work directly with me, hold me accountable. I need, yeah. I need my ass kicked sometimes by somebody. Really? I, I, get do, I do. It, I get that it's not scalable and it doesn't make that. money. 
Yeah. Oh, for the coach. No, I don't. I don't understand that though. I just. I don't. I guess that that, that that's a me. Thing. I, I think I, though. I hear what you're saying. Yeah. It, that's like eighty percent of people. They're like, I just because now you don't have a boss. Yeah. And you need somebody to go, hey, remember that thing you were supposed to do yesterday? You didn't do that yesterday. Mm-hmm. What's going on, man? And you're paying me $1,500, $2,000 a month to tell you that you should go do that thing. Mm-hmm. I don't I don't need that because I know that thing still needs to be done. And you just don't do that thing. I don't and do it. And you're not going to do it. And, and, but and I, have, I have paid the guy to tell me to tell. And guess what? Yeah. I still don't do it. Sure. Because I, I don't want to. Hey, I, I understand. Did you do it? No. Well, why not? Because I don't want I to. I didn't want to. <laughs> yeah. So why would I pay somebody to tell me? Yeah. Now, if you're brand new, that was smart, by the that's way. What the, that's what, that's, yeah, new, that was the biggest thing. You're brand new. Hey, this is how you structure the business. Now, I should have done that from day one. Yeah. I'd have hired a coach day one, uh, or at least if I wasn't going to, if I didn't have the money to, to hire a coach, at least get into like the mastermind group or something, something to at least start laying the foundation that this is the, the way you schedule. This is the way you do the, you process the vehicle. This is the way you write up a ticket, right. all of those I, little nuances that you just, you're I, I think the biggest thing is, is just being aware of that and cognizant mm-hmm. of that. And I think there's different avenues for everybody that that's coming into it. But yeah. I think a new shop owner needs to really consider that and get in a network of people, at least get this well, information and have for people sure to talk the, to. the, the problem with the group setting though, and I know they're all going to it, but the problem with the group setting is, is that they, you get into an environment where people are afraid to ask those questions that are a little embarrassing. Oh yeah. And it turns into a good old boys club and it comes into, we're going to travel just to have fun. And we're going to ride around and we're going to go to other people's shops and we're going to do these things so we can enjoy it. Yeah. And you might get knowledge, you might get information, but compared to, so from my personal experiences, seeing what people got from Mm -hmm. one-on-one and then seeing the switch and seeing what people got from group, I don't think group coaching is effective at the degree that one-on-one is. Now, I get it. To, to make that effective, you're going to have to pay somebody five, $6,000 a month mm-hmm. to make one-on-one coaching viable for a coach. Like, no, then what are you talking about? <laughs> but you you want to have look, – look what Cecil's doing. It was just Cecil. Mm-hmm. That's not scalable. So what do you have to do? Like, Not everybody's going to jive with Cecil. Not everybody. Mm-hmm. So you just bring in more people. Yeah. You just got to bring in more people. But then all of a sudden you have to learn to vet them. You have to make sure they're capable of doing it. Okay, well, that comes with the territory. Like, that's what I have to do. When I hire an employee, i got to be able to vet them and make sure that they're not going to run off my customers. You're salty this morning. (laughs) I'm not salty. I'm right. You're rarely right. (laughs) I'm always right, dear. (laughs) Maybe a little touch of leftist in there, too. Um, (laughs) What? (laughs) uh, I, I just... They know. have they have to hire somebody. It can't just be them, because like Bill, all the respect in the world to Bill. Bill's been doing this a long time. Mm-hmm. Bill is going to have core competence, core competencies. Yeah, and there are going to be some aspects of Bill's coaching that are going to push you personally and professionally. Mm-hmm. Past that, he cannot have the answers. Right. It's just not yeah. within him. He doesn't have – there's no human on earth has that. There's going to be some aspect of your business, and that's true of all of them. That's yeah. true of Rick White. That's where, where Cecil or any of the larger organizations are going to start bringing people in that now I've done everything I can for you. I'm going to move you to – this other guy Mm -hmm. or gal and they are going to be able to develop you in this other aspect that's the only way to make it scalable it doesn't work any other way i i i see that the group thing is not a good way to go you're right i i i i just can't see a group functioning correctly i I think like i said i've seen a low entry point yeah if you make the group cheap and you just need a taste of feedback mm-hmm. because you haven't gotten any feedback up to this point. You have yep. no concept of what that looks like. So, yep. hey, we're going to bring you in at this much lower price point. 
just so you can start seeing what the feedback model looks like and you can start making changes in your business. And then we'll see where this goes. Yeah. If you're like, I need something more specific. Okay, great. Now I can put you with somebody. In that aspect, that makes sense. Yeah. But to charge personalized coaching prices within a group model because you need to be able to expand this thing out and I need to have one meeting with five people this day and five people that day and five people that and that's the only way because i need to be able to spread myself out that doesn't work yeah i'm with you you're done we're not are you done very good yeah (laughs) i I was just waiting on you to say something else 